Psalms chapter 38, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. There are some things in the Bible that, the Bible says we're not to look back, but there are some things we are called to remember. Paul says we are to take the Lord's Supper and remember what the Lord has done for us, and remember that he's coming. You, you can't completely say, oh, don't look back in the past. Don't look back. Listen, even the thing that we say, go back to Bethel. Go back to like where Jacob met God. Go back to where you met God in your first love. This psalm is for a remembrance. America has no remembrance of what she came from. And that's where you fall. If you don't remember where you come from, and if you change your history, you end up where America is today. And you think America is bad. Christians have been bad before America went bad. America went bad because Christians forgot to remember. O oh Lord, rebuke, that means to chide, me not in thy wrath, neither chas chasten me in thy hot displeasure. You follow that with Hebrews 12, 8 through 12, for a father that corrects his child and God corrects you. You are never to discipline a child in your anger. You are not to chastise them. You are not to use the rod in anger. You're to calm down. And you're to spell out the judgments that you're doing upon your children as God tells us why he's doing what he's doing. And David is in trouble in this passage. He, he's in sin. And the reason why he calls out like he does in verse 1 like he does, because he know he's guilty and he fears what God will do to him. And that is what sin will do. Sin will make you uh, glorify the judgment more than the one that's doing the judging. And the one that's doing the judging loves you. And the Bible says in Proverbs, if you shall chastise your child, and I, this is not a complete quote, but you shall deliver him from hell. Listen, a parent that loves their children ain't going to kill them by discipline. I don't think it's ever happened. Don't believe the media. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presses me sore. Well, that's your conscience. That's God working on you saying, hey, you're doing wrong. And yeah, it may be chastisement. It may be judgment. It also may be the conscience working on you and getting you right. You better thank God that you got a parent that chastises you and corrects you rather than a parent that just lets you do whatever you want to do. I think in Hebrews 12, about verse 9, 9 or 10, I think God says that's a bastard. And there's plenty of bastards, and I'm not using that as a cuss. That's a Bible word that's running around in this country, and they're running around in the name of Christianity. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thy anger. Why is God angry? He's angry because you sinned. You've done wrong. Why else would God be angry with you? Because he's an angry God? Well, that's what the world and the liberals will want you to think. God will only be angry with you in your life, Christian, when you rebel and do what God told you not to do, or you don't do what God told you to do. God is angry with the wicked for one reason. They will not receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Sin goes down deep, and I talk about the moral that's inside your bones, a moral. It produces white blood cells. Your body is sick because of sin. So the Bible says, written to Christians, I know we use it to talk to the lost people, but it is written to Christians in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Sin will bring death. And some sins this literally tax the body. I don't know what David's sin here. I don't know what it, I don't know what kind of physical strain it is, but it is bringing a strain on his health. 
for my iniquities are going over my head. I have Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. He's in deep water. And when you're in deep water, guess what? You can't get oxygen to breathe. You drowned. You need somebody to help you. No drowning person saves himself. As in heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. All right, he's drowning, and all he has is more weight added to him. And Jesus says, cast your burden upon him. Put every, hate, every heavy weight upon him, and he'll give you rest. Sin will burden you down. Sin will become heavy. It's like a boa constrictor. Now that boa does not bite. That boa has no poison in his body. But his, his death is a harsh death. Is he, he gets around... Whatever he's getting around, a mouse, a human, whatever it is, he wraps his body around that, that, that animal. That animal breathes in. And the, the boa gets tight, wraps his body around tight. Animal breathes, breathes in again. That, that snake gets tighter. And every time you exhale, that, that boa constrictor gets tighter and tighter, and then boom, you, you cannot release your breath no more. And you actually die with air in your lungs. You can't push it out. You can't breathe in. So the spirit that God puts into you, sin kills you. Isn't that interesting? My wounds stink. Does this remind you of somebody else in the Bible? Job. This chapter you can match with Job. So when you got troubles in your life, everybody, you know, find a psalm that matches. This psalm will match with sin. And the deadly consequences to health problems you get. You know what most of the health problems are today in America is because of sin. Smoking, drinking, sex, not listening to what you're supposed to be listening, the improper diet, gluttony, sins are corrupt because of my foolishness. Look up the word corrupt sometime, find out what that is. You know, if you go out to your car, you try to start it and it don't start, you lift the hood up and the battery, battery is corroded with all kinds of things, that, that's a corruptibleness there. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's, that's, that doesn't belong there and stops the charge of electricity. Corrupt me, it just gets eaten away. It's a cancer. That's a word you can use for cancer, corrupt. I wonder how many cancers are out there actually caused by sin and sin alone. Lung cancer is one of them. Your, your liver being shot by alcohol is number two. I am troubled. Sin will bring trouble in your life. I am bowed down greatly. He's humped over. He's got a weight on his back. There's no standing for the Lord with sin. I go mourning all day long. Why? Who knows what I'm doing? Does that person know what, what's going on in my life? If they really knew what's going on in my life. Oh, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Oh, I've got to have it one more time. For my loins are filled with loathsome disease. It 
if you were to take this literally, for Job it was so. If you can take this literally, David's writing about something that you have not read in Samuel or Chronicles or Kings. A psalm of David to bring into remembrance of what? Of what sin can do to you. I would not say that this is a spiritual thing that's going on. I would believe that David had a thing in his life that he was just like Job. Now, I am not going to be so foolish enough to say every disease you got is because of sin. I am not going to be that foolish. I'm going to tell you the three reasons why you get disease. Number one, God. That's where everybody wants to blame, God. Number two, Satan. Now, number one and two could be Satan wants it, but God allows him. Number two, one and two could be God wants it, and he uses Satan to do it. And number three, the last one, your own stupidity. There are going to be people who are going to go to heaven a lot earlier than God wanted them to do because of a sexually transmitted disease or because of cancer caused by smoking or caused by drinking or doing something stupid in their life and they're going to die before their time called sin. And there is no soundness in my flesh. And this is the exact Rock copy of Job. Even Paul had a problem with a thorn in his flesh, which we're not even told what it is. And some people eyeball problems, stuff like that. We don't know. And here's another thing we don't know. We don't know about David's condition here. Don't go try thinking of things you can. Let's just get down and read the scriptures as they are. Paul had a problem for whatever reason, and God says, you're going to suffer that problem. Lesson learned from that, just because you're saved doesn't mean you're going to be healed. Number two from Psalm 38, sin will cause great pain and sorrow in your life. Number three, Job shows you that God and Satan are involved in it. I am feeble. And sore broken. You know what it sounds like? You read another thing into this. Doesn't it sound like old age? And you know what sin will do to you? It will age you. Some people will look at you, sinner, and say, Wow, you look like you're 65 years old. And you say, Well, wait a minute, I'm only 30. You'll have a rough, hard face. I have roared by reasons of the disquietness of my heart. Oh! Oh! Heart trouble. The biggest sin and, and disease of America today is diabetes and heart trouble of of uh, veins being hardened of cholesterol because we're eating the wrong food. Yes, I'm talking about candy and sugar and stuff like that, but let's look at the other thing. What about the junk they're putting in the good food? You think that is 100% chicken they're putting in the chicken? All right, it's 100% chicken. What do you, is it 100% chicken feed that they're feeding them? You know, America is so good, we have this great nuclear problem. I mean, progression here. We got nuclear power. Good. Oh, man, what do we do with it now? We, 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 what, uh, wow. Hey, look, I got this new pill. It's great for this. Ooh, it has a great side effect. We got to have a whole commercial more just to tell you all the side effects. I'll tell you right now, you, you take... If you take food that you kids right now eat, put it on the plate, on the table. You take the same food that Tracy and I had when we were growing up at your age. And put it right there on the table. And then you take the same food that the age of our parents were. 
and you put it on the table, and you take the food of our our grandparents, same age, and put, and you would try each one of those ages. I guarantee you, you find the food would be worse in taste. When I grew up, we didn't have a 400 list page of ingredients. And then when it said cherry or lemon, you actually saw in the ingredients cherry and lemon. You couldn't find a cherry, uh, a thing in a cherry, whatever it is that you're eating. You couldn't find it with a microscope. I like to know where they get artificial cherries from. What do you do? Uh, water it with uh, uh, powdered water? So there is sickness because of sin. Lord, all my desires before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. He's seeking God. My heart. What you are, your motive, your conscience, panic. My strength faileth me. As for the light of my eyes, it also is gone from me. He's panning. He has no strength. His eyes are going dim. Great health condition here. My lovers, and David can say that with an S with all the wives he had, and my friends stand aloft from my sore. Again, doesn't that sound like Job? And my kinsmen stand afar off. Nobody wanted to go near David. Luke 23, 49, and Mark 14, 49. I have for that, and my kinsmen start stand afar off. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. His family did not want to have anything to do with him. How many people went up to Jesus' body when he was right there on the cross? I only read of one account where they put a, put a hiss up on a pole or something. Why did somebody try to get a ladder? And go up there and put it up to his lips personally. I'll tell you why. First of all, they're afraid of people, the Roman government. That's why we don't pass out tracts to everybody like we're supposed to. We fear the people. They also, they also that seek after my life lay snares for me. So not only has he got this, this problem with his body, his enemies are out to get them. How would you like to be in pain and still have the people that are after you still trying to get you? And there's no relief. And they that seek my hurt speak mischievous, mischievous things and imagine deceits all the day long. You know, David's sick over there. He's eating chicken soup. Hey, we put some poison in that chicken soup. We'll get rid of him. You know, if we give him this herb, it'll make him go potty all the time. It'll make him really feel bad. You know what King Saul wanted one time? He wanted David dead. He went He went to Micah and said, bring me David. She says, no, he's sick. He's in bed. And he said, I don't care. Go to his bed. Bring him in his bed to me so I can slay him. David had run off. But I am as a deaf man. Now this is not an ail ailment of David. He said, I'm as a deaf man. I heard not. No one hears me. I don't know him. I'm as a deaf man. Heard not. It's falling upon deaf ears is the same. He's talking about a prayer life. Or anybody. I was as dumb man that opened not his mouth. I can't speak. 
Zachariah, Zacharias, I mean, Zach, what did John the Baptist follow his name? If I'm going to have it right. He couldn't speak. He was dumb. Thus I was as a man that heareth not. My hearing's gone. And whose mouth are no reproofs. No one's telling me what to do. No one's helping me. You know, that's quite a bit of Baptist preachers today. They, they don't open their mouth and tell you how to get right. And what to do with their sin. You know there's people in churches that are suffering just like we're reading right now. And they have the foggiest idea. Because every every service you need to repent and, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And come to the altar and get saved. Every single message. And I'm talking about the entire message. is to new believers and not to the saved. They don't grow. And all the sheep do is get is they get a disease and they just die. And pretty soon there's a lump of, of, of wool in a pile and the pastor comes along, picks it up, if he can use it, sells it. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou will hear, O Lord my God. So when he says no one heard, I'm a death man, he's talking about man. He's not talking about the Lord. For I said, hear me, at least otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. So if I continue this way, the enemies of God are going to say, ha ha, yep, where's your God, David? For I am ready to halt, I'm ready to stop. And my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Now you're on the road to recovery, David. But you know, let me stop before we go any further. Just because you repent and just because you get it right, Lord, don't think all those. No. Oh, boom, I'm healed. I use this illustration. I've used it in prison. I use it all the time. If you're stupid enough to cut off your arm, oh, Lord God, I'm so sorry. You can be sorry with your heart and mean it with all your heart. Mean it with your soul. Lord, I am sorry. I did not mean it. Put it on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God forgets it. It's never to be remembered no more for all eternity. But don't sit there and look at that arm like, well, when's it going to grow back? It's not. And I watched a man that had an arm, had no arm, in tears. So you're going to regret later on what you do now. Oh, if I can get back and go do, yeah, but you can't. But my enemies are li my enemies are lively. It means they're alive, they're well, they're and they are strong. They that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. And they will. Oh, they that live God, godly in Christ Jesus, I'll suffer persecution. You're going to have enemies. Marvel not, my, my friend, the world hates you. They also that render evil for good are my adversaries. For every good they give an evil. Because I follow the thing that is good. That good is, excuse me. Forsake me not, O Lord, my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. You start pleading to God. Now you can't press it 100%. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath. Neither chastise me with thy hot displeasures. You ever read Psalm 53? You need to read Psalm 53. For thy arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presses me sore. Cat of nine tails. Smack him across the face. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. The Bible describes his back as being like plow furrows. 
the dirt being ripped up and torn apart. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Now, Jesus didn't sin. But when, you, when his bones were sticking out, not a bone was broken, but his bones were out of joint. Now, he has no iniquities that are going over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. That's, that's not Jesus. My wounds stink and corrupt before my foolishness. Well, the wounds stink. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. He fell underneath the cross. I go mourning all day long. You know, all that pain and sorrow and, and beatings were actually 24 hours. From the garden to the cross. Just about 24 hours, if not just a little longer. My loins are filled with loathsome disease. And there is no soundness in my flesh. Beard pulled, thorns upon his head, cat of nine tails, nails are going to go into his feet and going into his, his hand, arms. I am feeble. He fell under the cross and sore broken. Read uh, Isaiah 53. I have roared by the reason of the disquietness of my heart. Eli, Eli, lama sevectinai. How about in the garden he's, he's got blood as tears falling as he prays to the Father and he goes back to those great Christians and finds them asleep. As the treasurer comes up to him and gives him a kiss. Lord, all my desires before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. Today thou shalt, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, today thou shalt see me in paradise. And I bet you God looked down from heaven and said, yep. Mark that name down in the book for you. You know, he wasn't baptized, that thief. And he's not burning in hell. My groanings is not hid from me. Are you telling me that when they beat Jesus, he didn't make a sound? I know he didn't say nothing, but you didn't tell me he didn't make a sound? Oh! I don't believe it. My heart panicked. He's on his way to the cross and he knows it. He knows exactly what's going to happen to him. He knows the nails are coming. We would have been on the phone to a, to a lawyer. My strength fails me again. He falls under the cross. As for the light of my eyes. It is also gone from me as the skies get dark. My lovers, my friends, stand aloft from my sword. They're down there, if not even not there. And my kinsmen stand afar off. There's his mother. There's John, the beloved disciple. Where was his brothers and sister? Where was Peter? Where were all the people he healed? They also that seek my life lay snares for me. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, call upon God. Let's see if he'll call and get you down. Wait, he calls for a liar. Let's see if a liar will come and get him. Come down off that cross, you idiot. Then we'll believe you. And you know Satan's whispering in the air. Come on down off that cross like they're saying. Go for it. Don't go all the way. You know how that church is going to treat you in 2014? 
and they that seek my hurt speak mischievous things. Ah, oh, you blasphemer, you think you're God. Come down off the cross and imagine deceit all the day long. <laughs> get rid of that Jesus, and we'll get the people back. they will get them back under our control. We'll have a lot of work to do, but we'll do it in the, in the synagogues. We'll get those people back under our controls again. But as but I, as a deaf man, heard not. What could he hear from that cross? I was as a dumb man that opened not his mouth. And the Bible says that something like a sheep. As, as, before her shares, he opened up not his mouth. Have you heard in Isaiah 53, he kept his mouth quiet? There was no guile found in him? Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth are no reproof. That wouldn't have been us Christians. And me too. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope that will hear, O Lord my God. I know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to die. I know you're going to forsake me for a little bit of time. I know I'm going down in hell. And I know I'm going to cross that, that gulf. I know I'm going to see Abraham and Old Testament saints. And then I know you're going to receive me into glory. And then I know I'm going to come back, spend some time with the disciples, and get them along. And in Acts chapter 1, I know I'm going back to the Father, that the Father will receive me. I will sit on his right hand until he tells me, go home and get the bride. Thou will hear, O Lord my God. For I said, hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. And when my foot slippeth, that magnify themselves against me. All the world rejoiced when Jesus died. Ha! He ain't stick that spear in his side. Ha! He's dead. Now let's get ready for the Passover. Got to go wash our hands and get our life so we can do the Lord's Passover. Holy, holy, full of baloney. I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. I will declare my iniquity. Jesus has no iniquity. I will be sorry for my Jesus has no sin. But my enemies are lively. They're all around the cross. There's more enemies of Christ than there are those that believe in Christ. One minute, the next. Hey, Hosanna! Yay! Glory to God! Crucify him! Great friends. You know, you know what I call that? The, the, hey, Hosanna! Crucify him! The First Baptist Church. Don't tell me. I've been in enough churches. They that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. You know, Bible says the, the the broad is the gate, and many shall enter. There are more people going to be who are born are going to go against Christ and His way than those that will. They also that render evil for good are my adversaries. Anybody who does evil is an adversary of Jesus Christ. You better not put evil in your church. And call it Christian. See, we we got something that's bad. That's Roman Catholic. That is worldly. But if we put Jesus' name in it, which is good, God says it's an adversary. You know what I heard the other day, or today, or yesterday? I'm forgetful. I heard that somebody wrote it, and they were asking a question about the Christmas tree. They had been told by somebody that the Christmas tree was actually the tree of life. I just heard that somebody talked, not the guy that said it, because he, he wanted to know. But the guy asked, he was told the Christmas tree, Woe to be the guy that taught that guy that! When you celebrate Christmas and Easter in your church, you are rendering evil for good, and God says it's an adversary. 
You said David said it. But David's going to sit as prince under Jesus Christ. And this is written by the Holy Spirit. So I guess in other Bibles we're going to have to change that. Because I follow the thing that is good. Or good is. I'm not going to have anything to do with those pagan things. Because they are evil. And you just give them a good name. Forsake me not. Eli, Eli, Loma Sephardini, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You, you think I'm full of it? You think I'm full of it? You think I'm full of it? Oh, Lord, my God. My God, forsake me not. For, my God, forsake, isn't that the same thing that Jesus said? Be not far from me. As the heavens go dark. And Jesus cries out to the Father. And the Father turns his head. Because at that point. Jesus becomes our sin. As he said to Nicodemus. In, in John chapter 3. As Moses lifted up the serpent. So shall the son of man be lifted up. And I'm going to tell you. That I, I got to be careful here. But that serpent. And Jesus being the serpent. At that point in time. Jesus became likened to sin, the devil. Make haste to help me. Lord, hurry up and get this done. He didn't pray in the garden about the death. No, he, he, he welcomed the death. He prayed in the garden about that sin, the cup of judgment, the cup of sin. And he says, Father, Lord, let thy will be done. But Lord, please get it done. Get it over with right away. And what was God's answer? Three days and three nights. If Christ died and did not go into hell, why would he say, make haste to help me? Don't you think he would have had a great old time in Abraham's bosom partying down there for three days? I'll tell you what happened. He went into hell. Oh, Lord, my salvation. And what's the Bible say as far as Jesus? God raised him from the dead. According to scripture. You know, I think another remarkable thing that I don't ever hear preached. Had God done that to all the Jesus. Everything that was done. Had God not raised Jesus from the, from the, from the dead. We would not be saved today. Had God not raised Jesus from the dead. Where would Jesus be? Let's say God is a liar, which he's not. He'd be in Abraham's bosom. <clears throat> so we got a psalm here about sin, and we got a psalm here about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what sin does to us? Read it again. It makes us sick. It makes us pathetic. You know what sin did to God? made him die before he died it made him sick it made him pathetic read isaiah 53 and it made our savior go to hell out of the three days i don't know how long he was in hell my bible says he went down there and preached to them Can you imagine all the devil in hell rounding everybody up to hear jesus preach i find in my bible also i don't want to find satan going down to hell yet you know, they got pictures of Satan in hell. I don't ever hear, I don't ever see him going to hell. I see him walking around the earth, to and through the earth. Maybe he does, but I don't know. But I know there was a time the Bible says that Jesus preached to those in hell. I'm the way, I'm the truth. You should listen to me. You you're going to you're going to face judgment one day. Uh you want to, somebody wanna hand me the keys of death and hell? And as the disciples saw Jesus, they thought it was a spirit, and they screamed out as Jesus walked across that gulf, like he did on the sea. Walking over to Abraham's bosom, Abraham's like, and he's like, I'll be over there in a minute. How'd you know I was coming, Abraham? And the thief over there, he told me all about it. Well, let's go. Take paradise and boom. How's that for scripture? 
Well, Psalms 38, I would mark in my Bible, is when I'm under the load of sin. You know, there was a mother that said, Lord, can my two sons sit on the left hand and the right hand of you? And Jesus said, listen, that's not my power. Can you drink of the same cup I shall drink him? Can you be baptized the same baptism I'm going to be up? And here it is, death and suffering. And James and John did suffer. As we close. salvation's plan is just a fair